everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I'm a big fan of the Raspberry Pi, and I was wondering how long it was going to take for somebody to make a single board Windows PC, and that day has come. Uh, this is the Latte Panda, and I bought this uh, through Kickstarter for about $93, but it looks like they are uh, targeting a $90 price tag right now for this thing for uh, regular orders. And this is what it is. It's a single board computer running with an Atom Cherry Trail processor. This is an X5Z8300 at uh, 1.44 gigahertz. You see we got two gigs of RAM as well as 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage built in too, plus a full Windows 10 license. And there's even more to talk about in a minute, but I did want to let you know that I uh, bought this with my own funds from their Kickstarter page. It's one of the few Kickstarters I've been involved with lately that shipped on time and actually worked out. Uh, so we've got the hardware in our hand here. I don't even know who these folks are. Uh, they're from China, so I have no uh, relationship with the company. No one is paying for this review, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own because nobody is reviewing this video before it is posted. So this is the hardware here, and uh, one of the things that differs on this computer perhaps than other uh, Windows 10 computers, even cheap ones, is that you've got a lot more uh, pins on it. So you've got some uh, pins here for attaching sensors to it. If you are a fan of Arduinos, this might look familiar to you, and that is because there is an Arduino processor on here as well. It's a microcontroller. If you've ever used an Arduino before, it's got one built in, uh, so you have the ability to have a full-blown computer along with the microcontroller for uh, conducting electronic experiments or other kinds of things you might be doing if you are a maker. Uh, I am not a maker, unfortunately, so I'm going to touch on very briefly some of the Arduino stuff that's on board here, but I really don't have a lot of background knowledge of it, so I would love to get uh, maybe somebody on the channel. Maybe I'll let, let, the, let somebody borrow this for a little bit and try to do some projects with it. But what's nice is that you do have the Arduino microcontroller built in, so you can have uh, the logic and the horsepower of an Atom processor along with uh, the microcontroller for some of your projects, which I think for a lot of makers might be really interesting. It's an, an Atmel at Mega 32U4 microcontroller. It's the same as the Arduino Leonardo. And uh, these areas here, this pin set here is controlled by that Arduino microcontroller. This pin set over here is for the Atom processor. So there's some things you can access uh, through Windows directly or through the processor directly. Uh, other stuff is going through the Arduino and it's linked up via a COM port. So there is a serial interface, although it is uh, basically baked into the board here. So you've got that going on. There is a four gigabyte version available that also has 64 gigabytes of storage. That one goes for $139. Uh, but this one is the entry level point because that's always what we look at here on the channel. Uh, there are some other ports on board worth mentioning. You've got, I think this is 100 megabit ethernet on here. You've got an SD card slot here, which I couldn't get to work earlier. So I have to play around with that a little bit more. Uh, it is powered though by USB voltage, two amps at five volts. And I found the power to be a little bit problematic, especially when you start talking about uh, some of the USB stuff here on the other side. So you have two USB ports as well as a uh, 2.0 ports, as well as a USB 3.0 port over here, along with HDMI out. And I uh, did notice that when I plugged in a, one of my little portable SSD drives, it shut the whole thing down. It didn't have enough voltage to power the computer along with uh, accessories that you plug in. Uh, so you'll definitely want, if, especially if you're using drives or other external devices, you'll definitely want to get uh, some powered hubs in order to hook those devices up to this because it is very, uh, it doesn't have a lot of margin on its available power. So anything you plug in beyond a uh, keyboard, a mouse, maybe a memory stick or something will tax it. But remember, uh, this has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, eMMC storage that it boots from. So you do have a little bit more flexibility on here uh, than you might have on some other devices out there. Uh, there's also a display output here and uh, they have a touchscreen overlay as well. And there is a IPS panel that you can buy too. And it actually looks very inexpensive, like $16 or something. Uh, connects via ribbon cable to here too. So if you are a maker and looking for something really powerful, this might be worth looking at. Now what we're going to do next is boot up Windows and do all of our regular tests on this thing. And then in a second video, I'll start experimenting with some Linux installations and some other stuff. I haven't gotten to that yet. I did want to go through the Windows stuff first because that's really what they're focusing this product on. But I will try to boot up some alternative operating systems on here. I do believe it supports Android. At least I saw some mention of that in the bio. So we'll be doing that uh, in a second video. But I think for consumers, and I'll just kind of say this up front, uh, you could spend about the same and get a Kangaroo Mini PC, which even comes with its own power supply in a case. Uh, so this is really, I don't think a consumer product so much as it is a, a hobbyist and electronics enthusiast project because it does have a lot more than the Kangaroo does for connectivity, but a little bit less friendly for consumers. So let's get this thing booted up and see what it can do. 
All right, so we're gonna get this thing hooked up. I'm going to connect up my ethernet jack here. There is Wi-Fi built in, uh, it's 802.11n, and there is also Bluetooth built in too, but you need to connect an antenna that they give you with it. It's just like a little wire uh, in order to get everything to work. So you have to get all that plugged in first. Now what I'm gonna do first here is apply power, and it's not going to come up automatically uh, like the Raspberry Pi does. So you will see it light up here, so that blue light is gonna come on, and that red light down here, the power light will come on as well, but it goes through kind of a little boot up procedure, maybe of its BIOS before uh, it is ready to actually get going. So uh, you will see this thing light up blue and then kind of shut off, and then what we'll do here is attach my video. There is a power button over here, so I'm going to push that power button in, uh, and that will actually start the boot up procedure. So I'm going to switch over to my two up view here so you can see how long it takes to get going. So there might be a setting in the BIOS to have it automatically start uh, when you connect power. So we'll maybe look at that when we do our more in-depth uh, video of everything else. But you can see here it does come up relatively quickly about where we've seen uh, other Atom chips come up and start running at. So not too bad of a boot time on it uh, once everything is configured. So let's go in and take a look and see how it performs. All right, let's start off with a test of a 4K YouTube video from my YouTube channel, and we'll pull up uh, uh, this one here and see how fast everything comes up. So it is playing back about the same rate of speed we've seen on other Atom processors. This is the slower X5Z8300 versus the 8500 that we looked at uh, on the Kangaroo PC recently. So it does seem to be keeping up just fine with that on the Edge browser, uh, and it is, of course, downscaling that 4K video to uh, the display window we have here. I'll just pull up our stats for nerds real quick and get a look at uh, whether or not we're dropping any frames and we're not so that seems to be working pretty well so that is not bad and again on par with what we've seen with uh, other low-end PCs and we'll go over and uh, maybe just pull up a website real quick and see how fast everything renders in there. Uh, one of the things that these uh, little PCs struggle with is all the ads and JavaScript and everything as they are uh, getting uh, rendered in and processed but the initial page rendering here does seem to be taking about the same amount of time we've seen on other Atom based processors so we're uh, in line with other cheap computers here and it does seem to be working pretty well. We just have to wait for uh, the ads to finish up there and maybe we can try to click on an article here once those ads are done uh, and see how fast we can jump around from one page to the next. But I do think it seems to be working about what I would expect it to for its price point and for uh, the processor it has built in. So it looks like we're able to uh, get these articles up and browsed uh, pretty quickly. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 6,160, which puts it above uh, where some other Atom Bay Trail based devices were a year or two ago, but it puts it below current devices running with the same processor that's on this one. So this has the uh, X5Z8300 processor, the same chip that's in the Intel Compute Stick, yet the Intel Compute Stick performs better on this benchmark test than uh, the Latte Panda does. And I suspect it might be due to how much power uh, is coming into this device versus the Intel device. So Intel has a, a three amp power supply they pack in the box. Uh, this one doesn't pack in anything in the box, but they recommend a two amp tablet charger, which is one amp less than the Intel one is providing. So I think that might uh, be why we see a little bit of a performance benchmark uh, difference between the two devices. It doesn't feel all that different, but the benchmark definitely shows us that it is a little bit slower. But Microsoft Office seems to be running just fine on here. This is Microsoft Word running with our newsletter template. You can see it is rendering things relatively nicely as we're scrolling through the page here. I can move some images around and reflow text and do all the other stuff you might want to do. So it really does feel about uh, where we've seen other $100 Windows PCs fare on performance, uh, certainly usable for this kind of stuff. Now, because this is running an Intel Atom processor, this is going to be a little bit faster for gaming than uh, some of the other single board computers out there like the Raspberry Pi. So something like Minecraft here uh, will actually run pretty well on it, although not as well as it might on other low-end Windows PCs that come a little bit more pre-packaged. So we're only seeing about uh, 20 or 30 frames per second or so uh, playing the original version of Minecraft here with the Optifine plugin installed. We get a little bit better performance out of the Kangaroo Mini PC, uh, partly because that one is running with a slightly faster processor in this uh, processor generation of Atom chips. So uh, you will, though, you know, get a playable experience out of here. I think this might be a lot of fun for retro emulation because there are some great emulators on Windows. You won't run like the GameCube stuff or any of the PS2 things or the higher end emulators, but certainly all the stuff from the 90s, mid 90s on back, uh, like the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64 and those sorts of things uh, should run really, really well on here. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we get a score of 1,900. 
93, which again puts it below the Intel Compute Stick running with the same processor. So not the best uh, 3D gaming performance out of this, but uh, good enough, I think, for a single board computer. Now, because we have Ethernet built into this, uh, we can actually do some good uh, streaming with it. So I'm going to take a look now at Steam in-home streaming and see how it does off of my gaming PC. All right, so now we're streaming Rocket League from my big gaming PC in the next room, and it seems to be working really well here. No lag, a really smooth performance, nice frame rates out of here, so everything is working very well. Now, remember, this is not running natively on my uh, little computer here. This is just streaming from the big computer, but uh, because we're connected via Ethernet uh, that's built into the device, it's working pretty well, and I do have a uh, compatible Xbox One controller attached to it also, so you could get one of those uh, wireless adapters and connect your Xbox One controllers to this and have a pretty nice... Uh, game streaming experience. It'll work just as well with the Xbox uh, streaming app uh, as well as it does with Steam too. So you can have a really good gaming performance here with something really tiny that can get uh, tucked out of the way. But let's take a look now at some high bitrate movie files and see how it fares with that. All right, so we got Cody loaded up here. Let's take a look at a little Back to the Future here. This is a Blu-ray MKV file. This is a very big uh, file that I ripped right off of my Blu-ray disc. And as you can see here, it spins up very quickly. The frame rate is very stable. I'll skip ahead a little bit to a different part of the movie here. You can see how fast that came up. Uh, this is going over my network from a network-attached storage device down in the basement. Uh, but you can see here, this is a really good video watching experience, both online with YouTube and maybe Netflix, uh, as well as uh, going off of Kodi here. I did let this run for about 45 minutes or so earlier this evening just to make sure that there wasn't any thermal issues. It was able to keep up with the movie the entire time, uh, no problems whatsoever with it. So it really does perform quite well for movie watching. Now, before we close out, I do want to show you the BIOS on this because this is kind of a maker's computer. They really get granular with the settings. There is a lot of stuff that you can go in and configure on here. Uh, so we might be able to squeeze some better performance out of it too if we really start playing around with some of these different settings on here. So lots of stuff to play with, a lot of things you can break as well. So you definitely want to be careful with it. Uh, but I did want to show you just how much stuff uh, is on here for you to play around with as you're uh, playing with your new uh, Windows computer on a single board. Lots of, lots of stuff that you can get yourself into on here, and we'll probably explore this stuff maybe later on if there's enough interest. So a uh, really nice little single board computer here from Latte Panda. Uh, for me, at least, one of the first Windows-based single board computers I've seen. Uh, you do get that uh, Intel Atom processor. You can get a four gigabyte version with 64 gigs of storage, Windows 10 license included. I would love to see one without the license. I'd curious to see what it might cost, because if it's $89 with this configuration, uh, I can only imagine it costing far less than that without the Windows license, but perhaps they're getting that uh, special deal on the Chinese license that we're seeing from some of the other uh, Chinese PC manufacturers, so they may not be that big of a cost difference, but a uh, pretty impressive little price for this little guy, but I think if you are uh, looking to buy this computer just to use it as a computer, uh, something like the Kangaroo might be a better deal at $99, because you get the power supply, it can have a lot more stuff connected to it, a little bit more flexible to work with from a consumer standpoint, but I think this thing is going to be uh, quite the toy for those of us who like to dig in and really mess around with stuff, especially if you are an Arduino user because you do get that Arduino uh, built into the same board. And I think for a lot of folks, this is going to be a lot of fun uh, for playing around with different projects. I'd love to hear what you think you could do with it. Let me know in the comments below. And this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.